Hey everybody, welcome to ThaxCast. As always, my name's Terrell, thanks for coming by. Today I wanted to talk about Ruby. That's Ruby with a W, not a U, but also with a U. You'll see in a second. Ruby centers around four girls who are training to be warriors, or essentially peacekeepers, of the world of Remnant. The character Ruby, with a U, is basically a pure-hearted, badass Red Riding Hood. Though to be clear, creator Monty Ohm said she is merely inspired by Red Riding Hood and not based on her. So I try to avoid spoilers generally, but since this is in the first like 15 minutes of the show, I don't think it's too big of a spoiler to talk about it. You may think from the art that the letters stand for red, white, black, and yellow. You wouldn't necessarily be completely wrong because those are colors associated with the main characters. However, the name actually stands for the names of the characters, Ruby Rose, voiced by Lindsay Jones, Weiss Schnee, voiced by Kara Eberly, Blake Belladonna, voiced by Aaron Zek, and Yang Zhao Long, voiced by Barbara Dunkelman. Ruby is basically an embodiment of purity and innocence. Weiss comes off as bitchy, in fact she gets called the Ice Queen quite a bit, but ultimately she has a kind heart. Blake is broody and mysterious, and Yang is the ultimate extrovert badass looking for an adventure and a good fight. I'm Yang, let's fight! Speaking of that clip, there's also a spin-off series called Ruby Chibi. Chibi is just a series of fun animated shorts that don't add to the canon, but just have fun with the characters. Although I will say that you should probably get to at least volume 2 or 3 of the original Ruby before you start watching Chibi because the timelines don't really match up and there are some small spoilers that come up in Ruby Chibi that you wouldn't want to see in, say, season 1. Fun fact, Weiss Schnee basically translates to Snow White. Blake Belladonna basically means Black Deadly Nightshade, referring to the Atropa Belladonna, which is a plant that has dark, toxic berries. Yang Xiao Long basically translates to Sunny Little Dragon, which is actually specifically referenced in the episode Family. Anyway, these girls are going to an academy that trains people to become hunters and huntresses who basically protect the people of Remnant from the creatures of Grimm. Grimm are soulless, dark creatures that are drawn to strong emotions, particularly from large crowds. In the course of hunter and huntress training, people are trained to unlock two special things about them. One is their aura. Aura is basically concentrated life force as part of your soul. When activated, it can heal wounds faster than normal, provide a shield-like protection from physical damage, and power your semblance, which is the second thing they unlock. Semblances are really cool. They're basically your own personalized superpower that you have to unlock through various methods that they talk about in the show. Now, most people have a random semblance that doesn't really uh, mirror somebody else's, but occasionally you do get some of those. And the Snee family in particular is a little bit unique in that they have their semblances inherited from generation to generation. And it's not really clear if that happens a lot or not, but it seems like it's pretty rare because they're the only ones we've really come across that have that ability. Some examples of semblances are super speed, passively bending luck, temporarily creating clones of yourself, and creating illusions. The other power type of thing that they talk about in the show is dust, which is basically ground up crystals. The dust from these crystals essentially have different powers based on their color. The four basic dust colors are red, blue, yellow, and green for fire, water, electricity, and plant. They are most commonly used to augment weapons like making incendiary bullets. In terms of story, it's a little hard to say much more without going into spoiler territory. So instead I want to tell you a little bit about the background of the show and what I like about it specifically. As of the time of this recording, the series is currently in Volume 7, but it was originally developed for Rooster Teeth by Monty Ohm back in 2013. Monty had been developing the idea of Ruby for years before it was made. He was working on the 10th season of Rooster Teeth's machinima series Red vs. Blue when he approached its creator Bernie Burns with his idea and asked if he could make it. Bernie was worried about the time crunch of Red vs. Blue's Season 10 and told Monty, If you finish Season 10, then you can do whatever you want. Thus, Ruby was officially born. It also became the first American-made anime to be marketed in Japan, which is a big deal. Unfortunately, during the production of Volume 3, Monty had an allergic reaction from a medical procedure, which put him in a coma, ultimately resulting in his death. His co-writers took the helm to continue Monty's vision, and his brother, Neith, took over the voice of Lai Ren, who Monty had been voicing. So aside from the story, which is fantastic, there's a couple of things that I really like about the show and the way it works. The animation gets better every year. The only shows that come to mind that have made such drastic improvements are South Park and The Simpsons, both completely iconic shows. It's a little thing, but I really like how the intro changes from volume to volume because it allows that volume to be unique in the tone and feel of it. In fact, it lets the first episode of that season air 
And then the intro is at the end of that first episode, one, to avoid spoilers for that first episode, but two, because it's letting the episode set the tone and then caps it off with an epic metal song. Speaking of the music, Jeff Williams composes the music for the show and his daughter, Casey Lee Williams, does most of the vocals for the show. She started singing for the show when she was about 14 years old, and I have a hard time wrapping my mind around that because it's so good. Here's a couple of short examples of the intros, and they're going to be short because the whole intros tend to run over a minute each. I think that Jeff Williams does a fantastic job matching the tone of the music to the tone of the volume for that series. And Casey Lee Williams has a great metal vocal style. The show really is phenomenal. It can run anywhere from 6 minutes to upwards to about 30 minutes depending on the episode, which I also really like because it allows them to tell the story that they want without having to worry about stretching it or condensing it to fit a particular time frame. You can watch the complete Ruby Volume 1 on Rooster Teeth's website without any ad breaks or multiple viewings of the intro in under about two hours. I'll throw that link in the description. I actually tried to book the voice of Yang, Barbara Dunkelman, who works for Rooster Teeth, uh, to make a short video that I would include in this video, but unfortunately the request timed out and I got a message th saying that she was too busy. That's it for now. Go check out Ruby and let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and hit that bell to get notifications when new videos come out. And you can follow me on various forms of social media at ThaxCast. It's Saturday, which means I need to go catch up on the new episode of Ruby. So until next time, thanks for coming by, be good to each other, and have a good one.